A warm welcome back. I'm Sage and you're watching Kalkine TV live from Sydney and this is the last show of the day, the last trade. So let's get started with today's market close commentary. ASX 200 closed in red ahead of the RBA policy announcement. The Australian share market closed marginally lower on Monday as investors turned cautious ahead of the Reserve Bank of Australia's or RBA's policy announcement due tomorrow. The benchmark index ASX 200 traded 0 0.6 points lower at 7,025.20 at the close. Three of 11 sectors ended in green while financial was the best performing sector up 1.3%. Other sectors that were leading on the ASX 200 include AREIT and telecommunication services. Sectors with losses include healthcare, information technology, energy industrials, utilities and materials. ResMed Inc shares were top losers on ASX, down 5% at the close after sleep treatment focused medical device company announced its third quarter update, which fell short of expectations. Some of the other worst performing shares were Eagers Automotive Limited, Credit Corp Group Limited, WiseTech Global Limited and Altium Limited. Meanwhile, PointsBet Holdings Limited was the best performing stocks on ASX 200, rising 5.07% after the online bookmaker reported a 236% rise in turnover to 905.2 million Australian dollars. G8, Education Limited, Westpac Banking, Corporation, Kogan.com Limited, Charter Hall Group are among other notable gainers. And earlier today, ASX 200 opened higher, led by gains in bank and property shares. The bank shares were in focus as the Reserve Bank of Australia would be taking a call on the interest rates in the country through its monetary policy review on Tuesday. And the markets expect the Australian Central Bank to keep interest rates unchanged at near zero level or 10 basis points. And now, let's have a look at the major newsmakers today. Beginning with ResMed Inc whose shares were the top losers on the ASX, down 5% at close after the sleep treatment focused medical device company announced its third quarter update which fell short of expectations. The company reported revenue of 768.8 million US dollars down 0.1% over the same period last year. The operating profit was up 3% at 223.4 million US dollars for ResMed Inc. Next was Sorelto Limited shares were quoting 1.190% higher at 0.085 Australian dollars per share after the company shared the profitable upgrading of its payment services with many new features and facilities that enable full utilisation of the payment aggregator services. Software solutions firm Arctis Limited saw its shares rising over 5% after the company announced that it has entered a contract with the Australian Department of Defence for the expanded deployment of NC Protect. The contract valued at 296,000 Australian dollars is a software support engagement for Arctis for architecture and implementation services for the migration of NC Protect. Renegade Exploration Limited share price gained over 7% after the company gets Queensland Department of Resources approval for the transfer of the Sovereign Metals Limited interest in the Carpentaria Joint Venture or CJV to the company's subsidiary Renegade Exploration PTYLTD. Caravel Minerals shares fall over 3.334% after the company said it had received commitments to raise 7.5 million Australian dollars via a share placement, the company will issue 27,777,778 new fully paid ordinary shares at an offer price of 0.27 Australian dollars apiece. And Credit Intelligence Limited share price was quoting at 0.026 Australian dollars per share, up 8.333% after the company informed the exchange that it had entered into a share purchase agreement with One Stop Technology Investment Limited to provide small medium enterprise buy now pay later services to the Hong Kong market through One Step IT as per the agreement. CI1 will acquire 60% of the issued share capital of One Step IT. Empire Energy Group shares rose 1.5% to 0.325 Australian dollars after the company reported 
47% growth in its best estimate prospective gas resource to 3.5 TCF, as well as a maiden best estimate contingent gas resource of 41 BCF within EP187. And now, here are some financial stocks edging higher today. Ahead of the RBA meeting, financial stocks were the biggest percentage gainers on the ASX as rate-sensitive stocks edged higher ahead of the RBA policy announcement. And the Australian Central Bank will release a policy statement at 2.30pm on Tuesday, which would be supplemented by an address from RBA Deputy Governor De Bell on Thursday evening in Perth. The index heavyweights, Australia and New Zealand Banking Group and the Commonwealth Bank of Australia were up 0.5% each, while Westpac Banking Corporation rose over 4%. Westpac, one of Australia's biggest four banks, reported better than expected cash profit in the first half of 2021 on the back of economic recovery in Australia and New Zealand. The bank has more than tripled its cash EPS to 97 cents during the first half of 2021 as compared to the corresponding period last year. The statutory net profit stood at 3,443 million Australian dollars, up 189% on PCP. The board of Westpac has also declared an interim dividend of 58 cents a share. Boosted by strong earnings and dividend announcement, shares of Westpac Banking Corporation were trading 4.04% higher at $25.99 Australian. And now, let's glance at the commodity market update. The crude oil prices slid on Monday from six-week highs of the last week due to lockdowns in India and Brazil in the wake of the rising coronavirus cases. And Brent oil futures for the July delivery was up 0.41% at $66.93 US per barrel. While WTI crude oil futures for the June delivery traded 0.28% higher as well at US $63.73 per barrel. Spot gold was up 0.1% to $1,770.66 US an ounce, while the US gold futures rose 0.2% lower at 1,770.30 US an ounce. And before I take your leave, let's look at this important update from Australia. Backing the decision to ban all flights from India till reassessment of the crisis May 15th, Prime Minister Scott Morrison stated that he feels strongly for the Indian community, but the infectious cases coming into Australia from India had increased sevenfold in the last few weeks. And this being almost half of travellers embarking from India had tested positive for the deadly virus. With more virulent strains of the virus causing havoc in India at present, it is important. The government is vigilant. Scott Morrison insists it's not a racist motivation and advises that prior unpopulated decisions in the past have been the reasoning behind Australia being successful at flattening its curve that started to spike in cases during March of 2020. The Prime Minister Scott Morrison thanks Australian residents in India for their patience. On other travel bubble news, New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern is looking at opening a travel bubble with Cook Islands in weeks with an announcement due today at 2pm. Travellers are also anticipating the Asian travel bubble beginning between Singapore and Hong Kong May 26th. There is no news yet as to when a travel bubble would begin between Singapore and Australia, although the prospect of it has been raised in the past. We will keep you posted on the news of any developments as they become available. And that's all for now in The Last Trade. I will see you tomorrow as close as possible to 10am live from Sydney and stay safe and have a good evening. This is Sage signing off.